Hey guys, it's Miss Casillas. Yesterday we looked at comparing real numbers where we were just looking at two numbers at a time and today we are going to order multiple numbers. So it's kind of like what we did yesterday just with more numbers. So let's kind of go through the process or the steps that you are going to follow in order to order real numbers. So first thing is read the question. This is probably the most important thing because if you skip reading the question, then you're not gonna know how to order the numbers. So you're going to read the question and determine if the number should go in least to greatest or greatest to least. So you're either gonna go from small to big or big to small. Here are some other words that mean least to greatest, ascending, increasing, or minimum to maximum. And then some other words that mean greatest to least are descending, decreasing, maximum to minimum. Okay, the next thing you want to do is separate out the positives and the negatives. These problems can get really tricky. Um, so if you have positives and negatives, then separate them out. If you're going in least to greatest, then the negatives will come first. If you're going from greatest to least, then the positives will come first. So this step will just help you avoid some small errors. Okay, then this is the same as yesterday. We are going to convert to decimals and round. We've been comparing numbers and it's a lot easier to compare them whenever they are in decimals and when they all have the same place value. You are going to see me round to the nearest hundreds like money and then add zeros when needed so that they all have two digits after the decimal. It's just a lot easier to compare numbers when they all look similar. So I'm going to put two digits after every decimal. Okay, once you have the decimals, you will use those decimals to order the numbers in their original form. I would suggest drawing a number line for negative numbers because those can get tricky and then always double check your final answer. Number one, it says orders the number from greatest to least. So remember first part was just reading the question, underlining those keywords and processing what that means. It means the big numbers are gonna come first and then my small numbers will come after. So the biggest number should be first. Now I want to convert these to decimals. So 4%, I would do four divided by 100 and I get 0 0.04. Remember I want two digits after the decimal and I'm gonna go ahead and put that zero in front. Okay, then I have four ninths, which is 0 0.4 repeating. But remember, I want them all to have two digits, so it's easier to compare. So I'm going to write this as 0 0.44. Okay, then I have a number in scientific notation. Four, the decimal point is here. My exponent is negative three, so I'm gonna move it to the left. One, two, three. So that means I'll add two zeros in there. So it'll be 0 0.004. And if I rounded it, it would really be 0 0.00. Okay, then 3 eighths is 0 0.375. 0 0.375. I'm going to round it to the nearest hundred, so that'll be 0 0.38. And then square root of 0.16 is 0 0.4. And I'm going to write it as 0 0.40, so all my numbers have two decimal places. So let's really analyze these decimals really quick. I have 0 0.04, 0 0.44, 0 0.00, 0 0.38, and 0 0.40. Now they all have two decimals. You can think of it like money, and it's going to help me order them. So let's go back to our keywords. This is the most important part. We have to order it how it told us. It said greatest to least, so that means I need the biggest number first. So I'm gonna look for the biggest number, and that would be 0 0.44. But I'm not gonna write that. I'm gonna write the original form of the number, which was four ninths. And I'm gonna cross it out when I'm done. Okay, then I look for the next biggest number, which would be the square root 
of 0 0.16. And I'm going to write the original form. Okay, then the next biggest number is 0 0.38, which is 3 eighths. And then the next biggest one would be 0 0.04, which is 4%. And then the smallest number goes at the end, which is 4 times 10 to the negative third. All right, let's use this same process for number two. I need to order the numbers below from least to greatest. So this time I'm going to have my smallest number first. And if you notice, I have some negative numbers and some positive numbers. So that means that my negative numbers will be first on this one, since it says least to greatest. Remember up here we talked about if um, you have positives and negatives, you want to separate them out. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do. I know that my negative numbers are going to come first, so I'm going to write them over here. I have two negative numbers, negative square root of 25 and negative pi. And then zero is in this one. That's going to go in the middle. That's between my positive and negative numbers. And then I have 5.3 and 5 and 1 third. So I haven't even converted anything yet. I just kind of put them in some sort of order that I know it's going to be. So now let's convert them to decimals. So negative square root of 25 is negative 5. Negative pi would just be negative 3.14. Zero is obviously just zero. And then 5.3, I'm going to write that as 5.30, so it's easier to compare. And then 5 and 1 third would be 5 plus 1 third, which is 5.3 repeating, and I'm going to round it to the nearest hundredths. Okay, now I need to go least to greatest, so let's start with our negative numbers. I need the smallest number first, which would be negative 5. Then the next smallest one is the next negative number, which is negative pi. Zero will come next. And now I'm on my positive numbers, and they're already in order too. 5.30 is smaller than 5.33, so 5.3 will come next, and then 5 and 1 third. So on this one, main thing I want to stress is that we separated out the negatives and positives and zeros, and that made our final ordering so much easier. It was actually already all in order. List the values in decreasing order. If you need to draw a little arrow to think about decreasing, you can. We should be going down. So that means that the biggest number will be first. I see only positive numbers, so I don't have to worry about separating the positives and the negatives. So let's go ahead and just convert these all to decimals. So square root of 17 over 2, I'm going to type in square root of 17. Then I need to arrow out because the divided by 2 is not a part of the square root. And I'm going to round that to the nearest hundredths. It'll be 2.06. Okay, then 210%, you can move the decimal twice or divide by 100. And I get 2.1. I'm going to write 2.10 so it's easier to compare. And then 7 pi, so 7 times 3.14, I get 21.98. 3 times the square root of 48, I get 20.78. And then 2 and 1 6 would be 2 plus 1 6. And I get 2.16 repeating, so that would be 2.1, and that 6 is going to round to a 7. Okay, now I'll go back and read the keyword decreasing, which means my biggest number has to come first. So I'm going to look for the largest number first, which is 21.98. So 7 pi will come first. 
And then the next biggest number is 20.78, which is 3 square root of 48. And then I have 2.06, 2.10, and 2.17. 2.17 is the biggest, so 2 and 1 sixth. And then 210%. And then my last number, which is square root of 17 over 2. Okay, number four, it says list the values in ascending order. So again, if you want to draw a little arrow to think about it, you can. Ascending is going up. So that means I will have the smallest number first. And I have negative numbers, I have zero, and I have positive numbers. Even though this has a negative exponent, remember it's still positive, just really small. So I'm going to separate them out. And since the smallest numbers are first, that means that I'm going to have negative numbers first. So I'm going to put negative one-third over here, and then the next negative number is negative 3.6%. Then zero will be in between all those. And then I have 2 square root of 10 and 6.032 times 10 to the negative second. All right, now I'm going to convert all of these. So negative one-third is negative 0 0.3 repeating. So I'm going to have that be negative 0 0.33, round to the nearest hundredths. Negative 3.6%. Going to divide by 100. And I get negative 0 0.36. Sorry, negative 0 0.036. So that would round to negative 0 0.04. And then 0 is just 0. 2 square root of 10 would be 6.32. And then 6.032 times 10 to the negative second. I have to move the decimal back twice. So that's going to be 0 0.06032. So for rounding purposes, I'm going to round that to the nearest hundredths, and I get 0 0.06. Okay, now I have all the decimals. They're already semi-ordered because I know the negatives are going to come first. And now it's easy to compare them. So remember, smallest number comes first. That means the most negative number is going to come first, which is negative 0 0.33, which was negative one-third. And then the next negative number will come next, which is negative 3.6%, which we rounded to negative 0 0.04. Zero is in the middle. And then my smallest positive number is the 0 0.06, which was the number in scientific notation. So 6.032 times 10 to the negative second. And then the last number is 2 square root of 10. Okay, last problem, we have a word problem. Our same um, steps from up here still apply. So let's read it and we will identify the keyword. It says the average amount of charge different brands of phone use in an hour are shown in the table. List the phones in increasing order according to their average charge used in an hour. So that means I want the numbers going up. So that means I'm gonna have the smallest number come first. So let's look at the numbers. All of them are negative. So whenever I come to the ordering part, I'm going to put them on a number line that will help me order them because negatives get tricky. First, let's convert them to decimals like we have been. So negative 55% will be negative 55 divided by 100. And I get negative 0 0.55. Negative 1 half is negative 0 0.5, so I'm gonna put negative 0 0.50. Negative square root of three, I'm gonna round that to negative 1.73. And then negative 1.6, I'm just gonna change it to negative 1.60, put that extra zero so it's easier to compare. Okay, now I'm going to draw a number line to help me order these because negative numbers can get super tricky. I'm going to have this be negative 2, negative 1.5, negative 1.6, negative 1.70, 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 negative
negative 1, negative 0 0.5. Okay, let's start with the iPhone. Negative 0 0.5. Five. So it is a little bit closer to one. This is iPhone. I'm just going to abbreviate them. Okay, then Samsung is right on that negative 0 0.5. And then the next one, Nokia, is negative 1.73. So that is going to be in between negative 2 and negative 1.5. So Nokia will go right there. And then LG, it's also between negative 2 and negative 1.5, but it's closer to the negative 1.5. Okay, now it's going to be really easy to order them. I already have them ordered on the number line. Let's go back and look at what the order was. Increasing, so I need the smallest first. The smallest is the most left on the number line, which is... The Nokia. And then the next smallest was LG. The next one was the iPhone. And then the last one is Samsung.